We've got a legend lined up for you very shortly. He's on the line, but before that, let's do this. Oh no! Of course, this is a magnificent voice of Ken Booth. That's the way nature planned it. This is how we roll. Do you know how tall the trees are the reason it grows? You may ask me all these questions, but darling, no one knows. It should be clear, I really, really love you. Don't ask me why. Just do Do you ask the Lord Who, who love you Why he paints the sky so blue who? Cause that's the way Nature planned it For you and me girl Living together I said that's the way Mother nature planned it Don't ask me how For you are way, way. What a track that is there. Magnificent voice of the legendary Ken Booth. And I believe we've got him on the line here and he's in Jamaica and we're going to speak to him right now. Good evening, Mr. Groove. Are you there, sir? Hi, good evening. Is, is it cool and easy or warm? <laughs> Which one? Right now, it's kind of warm and easy right now. Warm and easy, okay. Yeah. And that's the way nature planned it. Just want to say hi to everybody in London. You know, nice town, London town. But Ken Booth started off a very long time ago in the music business. Tell us how it all began for you. You started off as a partnership with Stranger Cole? Yes. It's 41 years now and I'm in this business. But I started out, it, it, it all started in the family, you know, really. From a mother, sister, Ayasin Clover. She's the eldest and I'm the last. Um, my mother, I, I'm sure that I took it all from my mother because she, she's a gospel singer. And she's very powerful when she sings, you know. And um, my mommy, she's the one that 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 start to to see that that I that I have that musical urge, you know. My sister, the eldest one, I'm telling you about. She's the first one that actually took up the the, the entertainment business. And there were two comedians those days. One one of them name was Bim, and one was Bam. And she used to host the show. And she automatically end up marrying to, to Bim. And so, as a younger brother, she used to take me to the rehearsals with her and all those things. And I love what she do so much. You know, I, I love the stage. And I, as a matter of fact, I, I do pantomime before I sing and dancing. And she used to use me to do pantomime. And me and my last sister, we used to dance as Jack and Jill and the Bim and Bam show. And um, there was where I started the show business. You know, I remember I used to won all some contests at the YMCA, Young's Man Association, that's, I think that's what it means. And um, I grew up in Denham Town, and the school that I attend is Denham Town Elementary School. Now, this school consists of a lot of different singers, um, young singers. When, when the school given holidays, we used to have a, a concert in one of the classes, and would compete and one of the singers that I can't forget that comes out of that school is the Lana Stewart. That used to sing with the gay lad.
then in the evenings now when we leave school, there is an institution for boys. They call it Boys Town in Trenchtown. I used to go to Trenchtown every evening because it's the only institution that that have certain facilities that poor children, the poorer class, when it comes to children, we can go there and play a little soccer. We can go there and watch cricket. Every little thing happened there, you know? And um, they have a dormitory that they have a piano. And that's the first time I'm going to touch a piano, a keyboard. Don't know nothing about it, but just the sound of the key. I used to strike one key. And I could sing many different songs on that one key. You know? <laughs> and, Did you learn to play other instruments as well? Not really play, but I can bang a couple of instruments. You know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> not really a professional of such. Right. So in the evenings, everybody used to split up, all the kids from the corporate area, and would go different direction to go home. But on my way home now, when I scale the boy's stone wall on my way home, I have to pass Stranger's Cool House. This is on Greenwich Street, Albert Street. And every evening I pass, they are here singing. And wherever I, I hear music from when I was young, it draws my attention, you know? And I stop every evening and listening. And... Till I find myself right in the midst. Don't remember how to tell you about that. Don't remember about that. I just find myself. Music has so much power, you know? Was you excited when you first got involved with Stranger Cole, music-wise in the studio and stuff? It must have been exciting for you. Yes, after I met him, you know, um, he, he was a solo singer. He was a big, big singer, big, big artist in those days. Star at least. And then he sang with um, Patsy. And then he had a group. And the group Drift. And... After I met him, me and him start singing, writing songs together. And then he decided that he's going to take me for an audition for Drew Creed because I've never done recording, never done any recording. So he took me to Drew Creed and we, we sang Una dos, tres cuatro, cinco si. It can't be called it Una dos. Years you leave me. It's a song about six, number six, you know. And Drew Creed liked me. And as I sing with strangers, so the first time he had my voice, he sent me into the studio. And those days now, it was like two tracks. And everybody have to record at the same time, both you and the musicians. And I tell you, I really prayed that day, prayed that I would do this. That Because those days the musicians getting paid, that's gone to how much tracks they do. So I don't want to make no, no mistake and hold up the time, you know what I mean? So um, when, when the, the red light come, comes on, uh, right into it, and I do one cut, and I didn't take another cut with me on Stranger Call. And we did another song, they call it uh, Mo Senua, but it didn't release up till now, I never hear that song again. But then I fell in love with Sir Coxon, that's true the one. Those days, true the one was like the Motown. Um, the singers, that sings for him. It's people like Jackie Opel, Jackie Edwards, Owen Gray, you know, you name them. Some singers that you probably have heard of them, but they were big in those days. I mean, Trina decided that if we don't break that barrier, we we'll feel as if we're really going to achieve what we want to achieve if you don't go to Circax and, and sing a song, you know? Simple as that, you know? And we went up there, both of us, and we sing the World Fair for him. In addition, we sang the World's Fair. <laughs> Was you nervous when you were singing that for him? Of course. 
When you started out, you know, I tell you, <laughs> I tell you, I was so tense, but you know, when you're about to do something, that's the way I look at it. And then we sang, took my girl to the world's fair and let her choose all she needs there. Now, those days, we don't even take a train, we just a plane. <laughs> but we could write songs. We wrote songs about different situations and whenever I have an experience, to just think about it, you know? And so we sing those two songs. One of the songs that we sang for him was Artie Bella. Artie Bella, my pretty little darling, please come home to me. people like the whalers, the gailers, there are uh, Wilson, because those people in the business were for me, you know. And um, one day I was sitting down and on, he sent and called me and said, I think I should go on my own. And I, I when, when he told me that people like who and Gwen are these great solo singers, I said to him, are you sure of, are you sure of that, that I can really go on my own? And he says, yes. And now Sir Coxon, he had his own studio. So he told me that whenever I get the time, whatever songs I have, I must go inside and tell Jackie Mitu. You heard of Jackie Mitu? Yeah, keyboard player. Right, because yeah. he was the one who conduct the band and do most of the arrangements. So, as a matter of fact, I didn't even have a song. The first song that they tried me out with was to adapt his songs. A song that he brought from America. Because Sir Cox never had have good ears, you know? He could bring songs for Delroy, and it would suit Delroy bring songs for me for wheelers, you know. And so he brought a song back entitled Ooey Baby. Don't remember the guy that sang. And those days with Tamali had a group they called the Gaelets or the Solis, I don't remember. But they were the background vocal on the song. And that song released but didn't do that well. But the dance hall were, were popping up, you know, were hot and then Jamaica people was getting aware of the the musical culture, you know? This this car. This car start taking over now. And because when I did those two songs I'm telling you about, you know, the first two songs, it was soul, it wasn't ska. Don't be, he it thought that I should sing soul music, right? That's the way look at me. And But the ska now start to, Jamaican people start to love the ska. And so he sent me back in the studio again and I did. You're no good, dun, 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 for what you have done, you know? I have to go to the dance hall to hear it. Those days, if you're not in the selection, you'd stand there the whole night and you don't hear your song. But I'd go back the next night again and I'd hear, you're no good, you know? And my voice sounds so strange to me, you know, and ska. And see people dancing to the songs and, you know? Whenever you have the privilege, you know, as Sir Cox, whether we as gay as our dinner, you know, one of us, we can use up the time. So I keep going in and in and, and I did songs like, now you come running back. Now you come running on the track to me. Those songs I go to the dance hall and, and they start to get popular. Because those days were jukebox days, you know, the jukebox days. And I would pass a jukebox and I'd hear one of my songs and go back in the studio again. And Bob Andy, he wrote for me. I'm going to tell you goodbye, babe. But I don't want to see you cry, babe. I'm going to tell you goodbye, babe. I don't want to see you cry, babe. No, no, that is one of the first songs that actually started to make me get popular in Jamaica, you know? And then I went back again, and I did. I wrote this one now. Train is coming, baby. Said the train is coming. Coming, baby. I said the train is coming now. 
Those days, the machine that moves for use to as transport is close to and can touch is a coach, a train. So I wrote a song about the train and this is the song now that really break me big in Jamaica. The train is coming. That even the school children, you know, they would be in the jukebox, in a bar or in a club, punching the train, you know. And from that, I do a lot of hit songs after that, like when I fall in love. You know, um, as a matter of fact, not when I fall in love. But some songs like Moving Away. <laughs> went to England and um, Sandy Shaw who is a, a, a big star in England big star in the 60s she, yeah she sang puppet on a string there was a um, a contest going on in Europe there was a day called Eurovision contest that people from all over the world enter that contest and she won that year with puppet on a string and Sir Coxon were there and he brought it back to Jamaica and those days now we have more than two tracks now the shooter of business start develop now you know we have like four, six tracks, you know? And so, Jackie Me Too went and do the rhythm ahead of me, pop it on a string. But every evening in Sir Cox and all the singers, them, because those days we didn't have a bicycle, you know, it's walk, walk. So, and most of us live, live in the same era. I live in Denham Town, some live in Trench Town, Rose Town. So in the evenings, if one of us in the studio, the other rest would wait for us, wait for whoever, and all of us walk together. It's like a family then. It's like a family. We were, we were so loving, you know? All of us now, we're going down Brentford Road, and I heard a voice, Ken, Ken. And when I turned around, it's Jackie Mito, and I went back, and he told me that Sir Coxon brought that record, and he made a reminder of me, and Sir Coxon decided that he want me to do it. So I went in, and they gave me the record, and Sir Coxon had a little room in a record changer. That time you have a record, you want to learn it, you want to play it on that record changer, and then you go into the studio. So that's what I've done, and... When I went inside there, I, I recorded it. And the next, the same night, they had a, a dance at Greenwich Farm. And Sir Coxon told me that he's going to take the dub plate down there. And he said, I can meet him down there. And I, I tell you, this is that night. That night when Puppet and a String go on the turntable, like every f- five songs, they have to play it back again. Because the people crying out that they want it back. What is going to took me away from Jamaica now, like in foreign? in England is that it released because England have a, play a great part in the, into the development of the Jamaican music you know for real England Indeed. is the first place that started to to focus on Jamaican music especially with children records yes and uh, um, I remember that Sir Coxon come and told me that he want me to go to England now Alton Ellis he had a song those days called, called Rocksteady get ready Rocksteady Selling also, 
in England. So I decided that he wanted to do a tour and, you know, and it, it took me to England and that, that's where I get my first international exposure. And after that, no, we start to have confidence in ourselves and as artists. And we, we not, because even one of the time, you know, when we go on stage, you know, we used to sing sharp, you know, because our voice was so young. Jackie Me Too, he plays a great part because whenever we go on stage, we're just soul vendors and just get a light. When we're, when we're singing sharp, Jackie Me Too would, would be making sign to us. You know, and going and make striking the key until we start to realize that a great part of it is to listen, to listen to the instruments. And after that, all of us becomes professionals, wheelers, gay lads, you name them. You know, and we just start making lot of hit songs, and and then we have to leave Sir Cox and to because we start to realize that there was more than just the music. You know, there was the business part of it, and um, we we realized that we weren't getting what we entitled to. You know, and we started to rebel for more royalty. And so they don't want to pay us and we leave and we go to Beverly's. I did Freedom Street. And we think we still work more again and while of us. Whenever one leave, and everybody leave. So we go to Miss Passen Miss Pattinger, um, that's Gay Feet. I did Lady with the Starlight, Say You. Until we we started to do our own thing, we become independent. Um, I remember we had a company, we call it Lynx. With Dara Wilson, Melody, and it's me, gay lads, and a friend they called Bum Soakley. And, and we, we did a couple of hit songs that we produced on our own. But then those days, the producer, they would link up together and say, but you, 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 you know, see them gone. We, we have to get them back. And so the one of them link up and start to penalize up on the radio. We can't get the song them stay. <laughs> so I have to go back to them. I have to split up again and go back until I find myself at Federal, produced by Light Charmers, you know? Uh, you know, oh, I get to do everything I own. Oh, I get to do everything I own. I was in Canada listening to an album by Andrew Williams, and I heard him sing everything I own. And when I went back to the, my my friend, told me that Ken, when it, when you get back to Jamaica, do that song. It's gonna be a hit. When I came home, I was doing an album at Federal, produced by Light Charmers. Those days, it was ten songs. We, we have nine songs. We didn't have another song. And the spirit just just come up to me and. And I remember everything I own, and I said, Lady, you know, I have this song. And Lady really didn't want to do it to that, because when he's producing me, it's what he plans, that's what we do, you know? And the musician, them like Willie Lindo and Val Douglas, him said, No, man, we could hear the song, man. We could hear it. And for my sing the song, you know, even Miss Corey that owned the show there, Mr. Corey, they came in and they said, This song don't go number one in Jamaica, they're going to sell the whole show there. You understand? <laughs> And when it released, number one in Jamaica, and then someone called me. It, it, I think it, it released in England in the in the local market, like you know, not internationally. And people start liking it. And someone called me to do a, a tour. And I remember I was a show in Birmingham. I, I didn't have no stage to sing on. The stage was so low, the people couldn't see me. So they have to get one of the table that the people drunk the drink, you know. And four men hold the table and me stand up on it that it's not shake. I'm a drop off. <laughs> so, <laughs> and and anyone anyway, I do some PA on it too. And I did a, a show with Jimmy Cliff at the Hammersmith Palais. And when I when I get back home here to Jamaica, I, I was sitting on my veranda one day and I saw a postman and he rang his bell and I came out. There, there was a telegram saying that everything I want was in the breaker. And I, I, and they want me to do a top of the pops. Now, that week I couldn't get to come to England so I, because I was busy in Jamaica. So they got this guy and make a film for top of the pops. And he was sitting at a window with a shadow over him that no one can see his face <laughs> <laughs> because everyone thought it was me. And then the next week I came up and I do a top of the pops with the BBC orchestra. And then I, you know, I, I did about, I, I did top of the pops about 10, 12 times, you know. sheltered me from harm, kept me warm, kept me warm. You gave my life to me, set me free, set me free. The fine cheers I have the news. All the years. 
to have you back again Is there someone you know That won't let you go And taking it all for granted You may lose them one day Someone takes them away And you don't to talk to you words again How many albums have you done over the years? You've done quite a few for various artists like yeah. Nine. Yeah, I did quite a few albums but I, 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 I would say that compared to others I, I have the least of albums. <laughs> mm. I would say about probably 30, you know. Or I don't know if it's more than that. I look a bit over that, if anything, you know. But you've done a lot of touring all over the world as well, of course, though. Yes, in in this time of my life, I I, I have nothing to regret. I'm all right. Um, uh, my children are all right. Um, they go to school out of it. I have a home. You know, I'm, I'm satisfied and still have more to come. What have you got lined at the moment for <laughs> album-wise or tour-wise? Yeah, well, I, I, I tour places like France now. I was in Europe doing nine shows, one in, some in, in Spain and Belgium and France. And you know, I did nine of them back to back, not one night rest. Wow. That some people look and say, why well, do you wonder how I do that, you know? Nine shows every night I did them and didn't end up worse, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and I do shows in, in America very often, like with the, the Nevada Festival. I did um, the Rattatum Festival in Italy. Um, we guys are well beloved in in your part of the world. In Europe, yeah. <laughs> when are you looking to come over to London? Cause we we really want to see Ken Booth over here in London. Well, we see London is my kind of town. London is my kind of town. London is that's London, you know. For real. England, it's England. We can't forget England. Can't. Uh, England is the first place started to show what Jamaican music is about and now the whole world and you see Bob Marley come from my era and listen to this Bob Marley might be might excel more than all of us but he's not the one that the only one that developed this music no, it's people like you Desmond Decker right Desmond Decker Derek Morgan passed away don't forget them yeah the legends first set of guys that started to highlight Jamaican music Jimmy Cliff Desmond Decker and many, many more in England too, who, who didn't live here and but they have its songs in England and so they do a lot and but we have to give thanks to Bob Marley, you know, because at least, you know. Question, Ken, yeah. um when Desmond Decker passed away, I read the Jamaican Glean and it said not a lot of people knew you know, the youngsters nowadays knew about Desmond Decker and his fame abroad. So are they are they letting the youngsters in Jamaica know about legends like yourself and you know, you paved the way you for know, it's a good question, very, very good question. I, I try to, to tell them this in many interviews, that this is a legacy that we have. And if we don't let the children of today know where it's coming from, they're not going to know where it's going to end. And they don't have no ending, you know, but they're not going to know where they're going to go musically if they don't know where it started. So people like this man, they should be taught off in the schools. They should let them know and they should have things on the television that I like them, you know, and let this generation, another generation to come, you know? That's right, I think there's not enough, there's not enough TV programs that promote... No, no, that's a good question. There's not enough emphasis. On the, on the veteran and, artists. And, you know, and um, because you notice that most of it is just like Bob, you know? They would just know about Bob, and we're still alive. People, and people who really researched. People like the Japanese people, you hear me? Yeah. This is Japanese and the people in Europe, like England, all over Europe, they research. You understand? But even in our own home, as they say, that king is never a king. You know, where it comes from. But Jamaican people need to know 
I need to know how to keep this legacy intact. You know what I mean? For real. Right. So that's a good question. The best thing we talk about is this, the world interview. Delroy Wilson were gone. Jacob Miller were gone, right? Peter Tosh, Bob Marley, Slim Smith, right? Just the other day we lose one of our queen again. Last one of our queen. Phyllis Dillon, you know? Yeah. And she make a lot of contribution to this business. And they, they need to have some kind of slot to, to show people that this took place. You understand? Yeah. Right. And, you know, um, i really glad for this interview to cause... It's a good way. No, me not really come to England, so the people them know so we're still alive and intact, you know. <laughs> For real, and, and we really look forward to seeing you over here. What? As a legend in the reggae music. Yeah, man, do the journey along. Me always <laughs> love come to England, you know. <laughs> and you're happy with the way things are going right now for you in your career and everything? Yes. Yes. Do you have any advice for the youngster, the young artists coming up now in the business? What would be your advice to them? You know, my advice to all the artists that is coming up now is that music is love. Music is not hate. Remember that song that Dennis Brown sing? Love and hate. Nate can yeah. never be friends. No, I see a lot of things cropping up now in music that it don't suit the, the situation when it comes to music. That's not music. And we need, you know, one of the things that I, I personally think is negative is the way the, the words nowadays, some of the words. Yeah, it's not the music, it's the words that... It, yeah, and, and, and words have a lot to do with music. Because it's a message. And most of what's happening now, some of them, you can't let your children hear them and listen to them. So all I can tell the young folks today is that write good songs, you know, and don't follow. When you have an idea, right, it, it, that's the way you can have a difference. When you have your ideas, don't go to suit and make nobody dominate it and change it up to suit a selling kind of situation just because the people they might do the gimmicks. You just run with the gimmicks. And, but gimmicks don't last long. Look how long my song them last now. All our song. 40 odd years. 40 odd years. And them song they sound fresh. To Art Bella in a dancehall fashion with them called dancehall. Because it's a long time dancehall thing I go on, you know. Well, Ken Boo. You know? It's been a great pleasure and a great honour having you, you know. Thanks for taking the yeah. time out to talk yeah, to us. Yeah, man, respect. It was night in England, right? Well, all the people, them under them bed, I know where them is. Big up. You yes, sir? Cool and easy, right? <laughs> warm and easy. Warm and easy. Well, well this when you're warm, it's cool, you're cool still. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I thank you very much, yeah? And we look forward to seeing you over here in the UK. Yes. And if we don't catch you personally in the UK, we'll come look for you in Europe. <laughs> yes, man, I look forward to meeting you individually, you know, here personally. Yeah, and I want to pick up my son, you know, I have a son in England, and you know, his name Ken Boo Jr. Ken Aja, his name. Has he inherited your voice? Yeah, man, he's good. <laughs> when he I pass him, because he not pass him if he's not good enough. You know? <laughs> I want a man to know that if he's a son and he, he don't reach the stage yet, don't pass him. <laughs> him go back in the school again and learn and come back. And him do so, I know. I love him and do so. All the best. Enough respect. Thank you very much. Thanks for calling. Thanks, you're welcome. Talk to you soon. Bye for now. Yeah, bye-bye. So blue
joking I really think you're nice Don't think I'm kidding you And don't think I'm bidding If silver words are your price Hey! 